97 of the 100 day project and my project is 100 days of mixed media um, charms and clusters so here we go for today um the first thing i want to do and i have to say i'm not i'm not all that coordinated sometimes um but i want to put these jump rings move it over here onto a bead and then onto the end of the safety pin that is stationary. In other words, I don't want them, see what I mean? I'm a klutz sometimes. Okay, let's try this again. We're gonna put a jump ring on the bead. Doesn't help that my hands seem to be shaking. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put it on the part of the safety pin that is um, closed. In other words, it doesn't open. Now I'm gonna take these pliers and push the jump ring together and hope that it will keep my bead in place. I have another bead, which I'm gonna to attempt to do the same thing. My hands, I take after my daddy, my hands are large. He had very large hands. See if we can get this one together. Here's after my bead came off. <laughs> oh, brother. That was not good. Didn't stay on there very long, did it? Obviously didn't have it closed right. Jewelry making is uh, not my thing. Maybe because my hands are large, but I wanted to use these beads. Again, it doesn't seem to have closed right. It's a good thing I don't have a timer on this session. It's uh, still not closed, right? The, the jump ring seems to have been twisted some way. So it's not going, not closing like it ought to. I don't know. Well, hopefully that will stay closed. Let's try the other one again. Oh, that's what it is. Even though it's stationary, the, um, 
the jump ring is so big that it will cross over. So anyway, we're going to try to use it anyway. Just So it's going to be like this. Okay. Now I want to... Well, I think I want to do this first. I've got some fa some fabric that's dyed and another piece of fabric that's actually got some of the pa Plaster of Paris mixture on it. I have a piece of lace that also has the Plaster of Paris and some pink embroidery floss and a piece of paper. So we are going to first put this jump, this, um, on here and sew it and I did not thread a needle so I apologize for that Okay, I have some gray embroidery floss that I think will work for this. And I have a needle, my great big huge, huge eye needle. if I can get this needle threaded. There we go. That was easy enough. Okay, I'm gonna put a knot on it. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna sew it to this piece of driftwood. I'm going to come through the back. So my knot is gonna be on the back side of it. I'm just gonna do a running stitch. Keep it on the driftwood. Get a couple more stitches on here. I think it'll be stable. I hope it'll be stable. This piece of fabric is uh, some velvet that I bought and have stained parts of it, different kinds of stains. Okay, I'm gonna loop it back to the back and tie it off. These stitches should not be seen from the front, I don't think, uh, the way I plan to, to do the rest of it. But it's going to slip off. That's not nice. There we go. <laughs> I am very uncoordinated. I mean, you would find it hard to believe that I actually taught quilting lessons, hand quilting lessons, wouldn't you? I would taught both, hand and, and machine quilted. Okay, we're going to tie this off if it'll stay put.
and sculling through two layers of fabric so it's a little bit tough. Okay, let's see. I'm going to take my scissors, cut this off, and put my needle back in the pin cushion. Okay, so I'm going to push this over again. When I do the next step, it should stop. Oh, don't come off. It should stop moving. So, I've got some rusted wire. I have a ring of rusted wire. You get more than you ever probably will use when you buy the wire it comes with two of these okay so I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to wind it around this driftwood and then I'm going to Make a loop as part of you know like a hanger and I'm going to wrap it around this side and then I heard my my wire cutters fall, but they, it didn't fall on the floor at least. Okay, now we'll reshape this hanger a little bit. Push it over. Okay, so now I've got all these bits that I want to attach, and I've got my, I think my Fabri-Tac is gonna work. I, I turned it upside down so that it would, um, the glue would be at the tip rather than at the bottom, because it takes a while for it to move from the bottom of the of the um, bottle to the to the top. So there's the first piece, and I have this piece of fabric, which I'm also going to put down with Fabri-Tac. Then I have my piece of lace, which is also going to go down with Fabri-Tac. I think I mentioned to you that you can use either side of your lace, you know, whichever one looks the best to you. And now I've got this little bit of embroidery floss that I want to put down which is sticking to me okay I'm gonna give this a minute to dry a little bit and put the top back on my fabric tack and turn it upside down. I should have used smaller jump rings because this is not going to do what I wanted it to do, but which was to say together, stay, you know, be it a permanent piece on there. Um, but I'm going to take it through all the layers i want to make sure i get the, get the bottom one too through all the layers be careful this is a rusty safety pin as well
So, there is my charm for day seven of the 100 day project. I may have to do something to get those to stay better, but anyway, there it is, day seven of my 100 days of mixed media charms and uh, uh, clusters. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you tomorrow.